Welcome to Ask an EV Owner. I'm here with Nathan. Nathan, you test EV battery health for a living, but right. we're here to talk about your previous electric cars and current electric cars because we were just talking. I was like, oh my God, you owned what? Tell people what you owned. I've had too many silly EVs, but one of my favorites was my um, Honda E. So I imported <gasps> most beautiful blue color Honda E from the UK. <sighs> um, and uh, it was probably, oh God, it was probably about four years ago now. Yeah. And, um, just the most fantastic car. The design, beautiful. The driving was beautiful. The fish tank, and beautiful. It had, and it had that fantastic screen, screen all the way right, which is very unusual. One of the first cars to have um, camera mirrors as well. Um, That's camera side right. mirrors. Right. Um, what else did it do? So many cool things. And I, I particularly bought a UK one so it would CCS2 charge rather than being a Japanese one, which had ah. Chatamo. So that also made it much more usable. I so didn't realise the charged. Japanese ones were Chatamo. Yeah, oh, that's so there's interesting. a few in Australia. There's probably only a dozen Honda E's in Australia. Um, but I, I sought out a really nice one in the UK and brought it over. And, and now it's still running around uh, Brisbane with, a, with another owner and they're loving it. To this day, that is my favorite car design with electric cars. It's so cute. To, because it's retro, it's super cute. In fact, we were just discussing small cars, the footprint of cars and how cute they are and how fun they are to drive. What's the length of the Honda E? Oh, it's, I think it's, un, it's under four meters. It's yeah. like 3.4 or something. It's quite stout. Right. Yes, it's got no boot. Yes, it's got no frunk, yeah. but I don't care. Um, but you buy a car like that with your heart, not your oh, head. All heart, no head, all design, all style, but very pokey, rear wheel drive, really quite quick. So it quick. really drove yeah, well. Really quick. Um, I could have four, you know, the, the whole family in the car, um, particularly if we're gonna do like a little, you know, somewhere hard to park. Yeah. Well, the, the like everywhere circle. around here in the inner west. Yeah. <laughs> the turning circle is like a London cab. Is it? It, it is unbelievable turning circle. So oh. from a practicality point of view, if you're like driving around town, mm. it is the most practical EV I've ever owned. Well, we got onto this subject because I just had the, the Hyundai Insta and I just had such a ball. Park it anywhere. It reminded, my, it reminded me of my Fiat 500. It was that Correct. joyful, friendly, fun car. Park it anywhere, except it has five doors, not three. And you can sit two proper sized adults in the back of that car because you could slide the seats back and forth. So brilliant for yeah. space. Uh, that Absolutely amazing. That versatility is a really massive part of what you want out of a car. Yeah. Okay, so what do you own now? Well, I've got a couple of Teslas in the family. Right. Uh, one that's six years old, one that's three years old. But most recently, my most silly purchase uh, recently is a, a Verizon Supervan. So the biggest of the type, the tall oh, you got the tall, the yeah, long, right. The long body. With your three PowerPoints in the back. With my three PowerPoints in the back and all the space. Um, do you love it? I do. I've had it for about 2,000 Ks, and the yep. very first time I got it, I plugged it in, charged it all the way up, and drove it until I pushed it into my driveway. And so you can see on my YouTube channel, um, me getting it all the way to pushing it into my driveway after 355 kilometers of range. Tell people what your YouTube channel is. Um, so you can find that information at um, Zev Integrations, ZEV Integrations, which is my consulting company. Yep. And uh, I like to do particularly light commercial and truck reviews. Um, right which is where I've spent a lot of time working around the EV space over the last 10 years. Um, so you test uh, EV batteries, and in fact, well, I've done another interview with Nathan about that. Hmm. Is there a lot of demand yet in that trucking space for that? It's, it's becoming more so. There's probably about somewhere between 500 and 1,000 electric trucks on our roads in Australia. Really? Um, but they're disparate across lots of different models and brands. Right. Um, and so, but the, the most popular ones, I'm having conversations with them about building the test device to work with those brands so that they can do those tests on, you know, the corporate fleets that are out there, like the delivery vans for right. big green supermarket. Can you do those, like, a, I, I drove the Volvo... FH. Yes. Oh, I mean, I yes. still think about that. It was so fun. Can you do something like that? Can you test something like that? We haven't done the testing work to do that yet, but right. there is a demand coming out of Europe for that. There's right. about, again, about six or 7,000 of those in the world of the FL. Mm. And there's the FE and the FM, the big Volvos. And mm. I've built some of those trucks into refrigerated trucks in the past in a previous role. So, um, yeah, I'm quite sort of a hands-on technical person, but also, you know, I've done a lot of EV sales and, and, and marketing as well. So that whole space, um, I think, 
think is, is starting to mature both overseas and Australia. And yeah, we'll get to testing um, trucks soon. And, and it's an important part of the, the ecosystem. So we just uh, went through a test. If you want to watch the other video, it takes about three minutes. The email gets sent off to Austria and then you just check your email and then there's the result, which is very straightforward and easy to understand. So that's how all that works. So brilliant for any secondhand EV buyers out there in particular, auction houses are using it or dealers are using it. So very, very cool. Um, back to the subject of EV ownership. Yeah. So I always ask people this question. I have a feeling I know what the answer is going to be. <laughs> Would you ever go back to an internal combustion engine car? I have not touched an internal combustion engine car in about six years now. Um, in <laughs> fact, I'm, I'm here in Sydney from, Melbourne, uh, from Brisbane and I have uh, hired an EV and exclusively do so. And when I get to the counter they go so you've ordered an ev and i'm like yes that's right and they are you sure <gasps> even now even they're doing now. that so we're helping to educate them along the way but you're wearing that t-shirt <laughs> I, I wasn't on that time but look it's maybe it's time to start doing that <laughs> it's an interesting one where you know part of the, the whole ecosystem and the whole maturity piece we've got to work on yeah. is is how do we get the 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 dealership to want to sell you one, mm. the rental car company to want to give you one, um, you know, the the pushback is still strong. Yeah, interesting. And just one more thing, how do you charge your electric cars at home? Yeah, look, 99.9% .9 of our charging is done at home. Um, I've got a, a, a Tesla wall charger that's, you know, six years old now yep. and it feeds all of our different cars um we've got solar but it's not specifically um i'm not specifically aligned to that i use the ovo um ev charger oh. or ev program and for me that works really really well with the timed um you yeah, get the three three hours in the middle of the day that's right the and then the cheaper off. ones at night as yep. well and so we just manage our charging with that and, and i think it works really really well do you think we'll see more people or more energy retailers bringing out EV plans like that? It seems to have gone in ebbs and flows. There was some early um, players, so PowerShop did it originally, mm. and they seem to foot, sort of pull back. AGL is now, I hear, is pulling back from some people who are on their plans. Mm. OVO is probably the best, in my opinion, at Isn't the moment. Has OVO been bought by AGL? Am I making that up? I don't know. You don't, might be right. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't got that one I'm in my head, but it's possible. But I think as EV ownership grows with 350,000 cars on the road now, um, you know, the requirement or the desire to, to charge at, at better times a day, mm. all of that will drive more demand and there's definitely value there. So I, I hope that we will see some more. I'd love to see Octopus come over from the UK. Wouldn't that be nice? Mm. And I, I also, uh, I mean, there's also Amber, so you can take sure. advantage of the wholesale price in the middle of the day, which is that suits you. Yeah, about yeah. six cents a kilowatt hour right at this moment in time. So that's, for me, I don't have a very big solar array, so I, I just charge then. Price. And it's, yeah, it's luckily great. I can plug in then. But I actually think we need more workplaces to put in charging so that it's an incentive for workers to be like, your car's parked there all day. We can give you the incentive of filling your car at work for very little money. And, and I agree with that. I think what we should really be looking at is seeing um, governments be pushing workplace charging because mm. workplaces typically um, will offer that charging during a sunny day, whether mm. that's direct solar from that business or from the grid. We've got a high solar load at that point in time. The, the cost on the, the grid is low. If we shift that energy that's going into those workers' cars, cars into the daytime away from an evening time or another time yep. of day that's actually benefit to the grid so yeah. we should be incentivizing that just like we are things like pole charging here in the inner west well we're not incentivizing it because if you have an industrial building and you put solar on it you get no fit that's right which is nuts it, and and all of these disparities across the market um, if we really want to push this forward we need to resolve all of those elements so that we can get people making good energy decisions at the right time and, mm. and putting in energy, uh, you know, energy transfer for things like EVs uh, at the right times of day as well. I agree. Well, thanks so much for chatting. It's awesome. I'm still so jealous about the Honda E. I just, I still think about that car. Well, I've got another one that's going to maybe surpass it for design. So really? at the moment I'm, I'm uh, rebuilding a, a 1974 Lotus Europa, which is a two-door sports car from the late well, mid-70s. Are you a 90, 1974? I'm not. I'm a little bit younger than that, but it's close. I am. <laughs> <laughs> that car's got my name on it. <laughs> and I'm converting it to EV, so it's a full restoration, um, and it's going to be from left-hand drive to right-hand drive. Oh and then God. beyond that, I'm putting in a, a, a Nissan, it's got a Nissan Leaf motor in it, and yep. we'll put some fresh cells in it, and hopefully in the next year, year and a half, I'll have 
the coolest looking EV on the road. Oh. Do you think we'll see more conversions on our roads or do you think that's just a bit of a niche? Oh, it's definitely niche. Um, you've definitely got some, you've got to have some skills and you've got to have some drive and some, you know, an element of crazy. But um, I think there's a, a few really in, enabling things coming about. So I've got a friend in the industry who's worked out how to get the BYD motor system out of an Atto 3 to Ooh. work into a conversion. So that's going to be a real enabler because it's a great motor set. Okay. You know, it's about finding those components that are uh, the right kind of price, the right kind of use um, and accessible. Um, that will then start to take particularly really old cars like my Lotus and you'll be able to turn them into a into a modern day classic. Watch the space. Yeah, anyway, we'll see you in your Lotus. <laughs> Thanks very much, Nathan. Thank you. All right.